Let's talk about diabetic autonomic neuropathy. So this is a disease process that occurs in the majority of diabetics and development of the disease is associated with poor glucose control, obesity, smoking, hypertension, and triglyceridemia. And controlling these risk factors reduces the progression of the disease and is the mainstay of treatment. So when do you look for it? In type 1 di diabetics, you start looking for it at the time of diagnosis and then annually. And in type 2 diabetics, you start screening five years after diagnosis and then annually after that. So in terms of the cardiovascular manifestations, the earliest cardiac manifestation is usually resting tachycardia, and this is due to unopposed sympathetic activity. You can have exercise intolerance as well, and this is due to impaired sympathetic compensation. Orthostatic and postprandial hypotension results from sympathetic denervation as well. And in the OR, you'll have intraoperative cardiovascular instability, you'll have more silent myocardial infarctions, and overall you'll have increased mortality as well. There are some ways to evaluate for the cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy, and some of these can be done in the clinic. Uh, others can only be done in special research labs. So for parasympathetic function, you can look for heart rate variability to deep breathing or Valsalva, and you can do that in the clinic. You can look for sympathetic adrenergic dysfunction by looking at the beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure response to Valsalva. And in special labs, you can look at the sympathetic cholinergic function with quantitative pseudomotor axon reflex testing, or QSART, and thermoregulatory sweat testing, or TST, and sympathetic skin response, or SSR. In terms of treatment, Treatment revolves around treating the risk factors again, so weight loss and exercise are very important, as well as control of other risk factors such as smoking and hypertension. Maintaining a low salt diet, this will help with the hypertension, as well as increasing fluid intake, and this will help with the orthostatic hypotension. There are also exercises that can be done, such as crossing the legs before standing, that will improve venous blood flow to uh, supply blood to the rest of the body. And you can also be more careful when standing up from a seated position and go a little slower. Uh, there are some medications, but the benefit of medications is fairly limited in this disease. So flutricortisone can be used to increase the plasma volume, but unfortunately this causes hypertension, and midodrin can uh, be used for orthostatic hypotension. However, note that this causes supine hypertension, so uh, it cannot be used prior to going to bed. In terms of the pseudomotor and vasomotor manifestations of autonomic neuropathy, You'll have loss of sweating in a glove and stocking pattern, and this can lead to proximal uh, compensatory hyperhidrosis. And eventually you'll lose thermoregulatory function. There can also be loss of nails, callus formation, and peripheral edema. So how do you evaluate? Uh, the quantitative pseudomotor axon reflex testing again can be helpful here. You can look at the foot vascular response as well, uh, and the blood vessels here will vasoconstrict instead of vasodilate in response to heat. A skin biopsy has also been used to assess the small fibers. The treatment for this is to make sure to wear cool garments and avoid warm environments. Um, routine foot care is also important, making sure there are no calluses or uh, foot ulcers. There are some gastrointestinal manifestations as well. Uh, gastro 
gastric reflux is one of the most common uh, problems and this can cause heartburn. Gastroparesis is also fairly common and this results in nausea, vomiting, and early satiety. And you can also have chronic watery diarrhea. Evaluation of gastroparesis can be done. Uh, first you want to image to see if there's any structural lesion in the stomach or small intestine and you can do that by endoscopy or uh, CT or MRI. Uh, once you confirm that there is no uh, structural obstruction, you can look for delayed gastric emptying on scintigraphy. And that will confirm the diagnosis. In terms of treatment for gastroparesis, first you want to focus on diet modification, such as avoiding fatty acidic foods. Um, people with gastroparesis may have vitamin deficiencies due to decreased food intake, so vitamin supplements are important, and uh, sometimes metoclopramide and domperidone can be used as well. For the diarrhea, uh, you want to ensure proper hydration. Medication treatment is mostly symptomatic, and you can use antidiarrheals such as loperamide. For the genitourinary, uh, manifestations. You'll have an inability to sense a full bladder due to loss of the autonomic afferents and incomplete bladder emptying due to loss of the efferents. And these combined can lead to urinary tract infections and overflow incontinence. You can also have sexual manifestations such as retrograde ejaculation and erectile dysfunction in men and dyspareunia in women and the dyspareunia is due to decreased vaginal lubrication. To evaluate for the bladder dysfunction, you can do post-void residuals and sometimes uh, progress to urodynamic testing. And in terms of treating the bladder dysfunction, you will need to do scheduled urination and uh, when you urinate, you can push on the bladder with your hand. That's called the Crudev maneuver. And also avoiding medications that can aggravate the urinary retention, such as anticholinergics. For the erectile dysfunction, PDE5 inhibitors, such as sildenafil, can be used.